What's happening, everybody? Of course, it is Brink Young. You are tuning in to this is Brink TV Extendo. I'm talking about the first installment, and it's only right that I put a Memphis legend on here. We got to do this. Of course, y'all know who it is. I'm talking about the homie Gangsta. Pat, what's happening with you, Mike? What it do, what it do, what it hey, do, man. First Glad and foremost, here, brother. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Believe that, man. Of course, I got to say thanks for coming on the show. You know, it means a lot to have you, man. No problem, man. Hey, I'm, I'm glad to be here, my brother. I'm glad we got a platform like this right here. Now. Most definitely. You know Most definitely. Oh, man. You know, right. we got to we gotta cook something up for Memphis, you know what I'm right. saying? Because, like I say, Memphis is definitely one of those cities that the whole world is watching. Right. You know, everybody everybody is wondering after Memphis. Everybody's looking at Memphis like, man, what they finna do next so we can steal. You know what I'm saying? Right. So h how do you feel about that, brother? Well, <clears throat> honestly, I got mixed emotions. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't, we, we don't mind so much as the borrowing because music has always been recycled. You yeah. know, a lot of times, like the old stars, they used to blow up off doing remakes of songs. So yeah. we understand the recycling process. Just get a credit with a credit, dude. That's yeah. all we saying. We ain't looking for no money. We ain't looking for y'all to put us on no records. Just give us what we, what we do, and that's our credit for creating a lot of this stuff. That's all. Most definitely, and of course, I gotta give you plenty of credit because one thing about you, you were the first right, artist right, right. from the city to have a major record deal, man. Right. That's as far a, as rap, as far yeah, as, rap. as far as rap, of yeah, course. Yeah, you know, yeah. we got all the blues and the yeah, R and B yeah, and all of that. Right. But let's talk about that, man. So, what was that? Take us back to the genesis of that time, man. Uh, well, first of all, I want to say thanks for saying the first. Yeah. Like, a lot of people say one of the first. I know. There's no such thing as one of the first. Nah. If you if a guy wins a race, the first guy to cross the finish line is a winner. You don't say he was one of the first guys to cross the finish line. He's the first, so he's not the first. So, I, I, I think, appreciate you clarifying that. I think Nelly said in the song, I am number one. Right. Uh, three is not a winner, or two is not a winner, and three nobody remembers, or something <laughs> right, like that. Right, so, right, ain't no right, one of the right, first. Right, you right, are the originator. You right, know what I'm saying? That on the ground rap. Right, yeah. yeah. I would say back then, it was... It was difficult because back then, you think about it, in order to shoot a video, a good music video, you had to have at least anywhere from 60 to almost $100,000. Wow. Like, we didn't have the technology of shooting videos like people do today. Yeah. You can go get yeah. a good video shot for $1,000 if you know yeah. the right people, you know. Yeah. But uh, it was hard, man. It was difficult. You had to get tapes pressed up. You had yeah. to get records pressed yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you talking about people had in the front you thousands of dollars up front. So right. you had to convince people to spend that kind of money because we didn't have it. Yeah. And we ain't bringing nothing to the table but some words. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That. We ain't got the, the money to get instruments or none of that. People had to invest all of that in you. So it was very difficult being from Memphis. Yeah. With underground rap, trying to get somebody to invest all this money to make it happen. Yeah. Very difficult. So, I mean, like, how did it happen for you? Because, like I said, that, it, well, not so much as now, but back in the day, man, that was every artist's dream to get a record deal, like right. to be major right. and to be spinning on the radio and maybe had a music video playing and be doing shows all over the country. Of course, now it's more of an independent grind, but back in the day, man, like, how did that whole process happen for you? Well, honestly, I, I learned from some some people who are already in the business. Okay. You know, like the David Porter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People like that, you know, who are already structured from stacks and all that. So right. they pretty much told me exactly how it had to be done. Right. You got to get invested. You got to get somebody to press you on some product. Put it out there and try to, you know, get the attention of some majors. Right. So, you know, I didn't know, no, I didn't know anything about real investment. So you go to the people in the streets that you know is getting street money. Yeah. It had to come from there, you know, that was the only place to get it from. So I had to convince guys to believe in me, you know what I'm saying? That took a minute, right? you know, some consistency. So once I finally got somebody to believe in me, they put the money up. We went into the studio, cut the music, got it pressed up, got it out there, you know what I'm saying? So, and and somebody bid on it, you yeah. know? Somebody who had a connection to a few major labels. Right. And uh, we shopped it around, we even flew to L.A. Trying to get the attention of Ruthless Records because yeah. that's what we were shooting for. We right. wanted to sign with Easy, you know, right. so once we did that, once we got there, we realized that they wasn't really no different from what we was. We already had a studio, right. we had an office. Right. That's all they had. They, yeah. When we seen they offer, we like, our office looked better than that. Wait a minute, so you actually met up with Ruthless well, Records and Easy? Well, what? we went to California. Okay. We went to okay. Ruthless. He wasn't, they was on the road. I got you. you I got know you. what I'm saying? We had no way of contacting them ahead of time. Right, so we right. just took a chance and went. Ah, that's how you got to yeah. do it. Especially when you're from Memphis. Like, right. you got to show up and right. show out. Right. 
Right. So tell me about the timeline. Like what what when would you say this was, man? Like like 89, 90? Yeah, what this, was this was like eighty nine. Okay, 89, so 89. around that time, we talking about Too Short was popping like crazy right. in Memphis. Right. You know what I'm saying? So many different artists from out of the city, right. they was showing up in the city, you know, making it happen. My question for you, man, what was your style back then? Because like I say, I know the lock em in the trunk era, but was that lock em in the trunk back then, or what? What was it? Well, this is the thing. Like that style, that Memphis style, been around. Yeah. I can name cats. I can go back far as people like Cody Mac, yeah. Dirty D. You know what I'm saying? People who were rapping that Memphis style way back then. The style been around. It's just it was hard to get people to invest in it because people thought all oh, it was just a local sound. Yeah. I'm going to the world. Yeah. I want to hear that. The world wanna hear NWA, Chuck D, Public Enemy, you know what I'm saying? So right. <clears throat> you know, we I we I had to shape my stuff around. I had to kind of shape it to what people would invest in. People right. was it would be marketable not only just in Memphis. Yeah. yeah. So we kinda had to abandon the sound in the first stage just to get the door kicked in. So once yeah. I get in, we get ball them in, we get, you know, Paul them come on in, they kinda really you know, once it got to them coming in, it was kind of comfortable now to right. do the Memphis sound. Right. Now we got the respect. Yeah. You know, I realized back in them days, I was in Atlanta, 91, 92. Right. That's when Outkast was really, yeah. you know what I'm saying, blowing up Goody Mob. It's like yeah. I was meeting them cats way ahead of time. So, right. you know, I, I, I seen, I mean, like, if you think about it, we were the ones taking all those Memphis mixtapes down to Atlanta. Right. The Criminal right. Man, yeah. the Paul Valium, whatever number it was back then. That's how they. That's how Gucci Man and all them heard that stuff because right. we were putting it out down there. Yeah. You know? And like so, you say, man, you know, no social media back then. No you know, social media. You had to hit that road, man. Man, we hopped in plenty of rental cars, yeah. plenty of scufflers, and we drove them cities, man. We hit every city we could afford to go to. And uh, some of it went good, some of it went bad, but by the time we left, they knew they knew the name. You know what I'm saying? I so, feel you. I feel you. So my question next, man. At what point did you really taste that fame and say, damn, I done made it. I'm here. This really going on. I can pinch myself to see my dreaming. At what point was that? Uh, I have to say, like, it was too, it, it happened twice. Okay. First time it was like opening up for Ice Cube. Wow. You know what I'm saying? At the Cook Convention Center. Okay. And uh, second time was when I put the second album out through Itchy Bond. Dr. Dre had just came out with the crunch. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? And we bumped into them on the road. They were doing promo. We right. were doing promo too. I was riding with Bree. You know, Bree was kind of new everybody, all them LA cats, DOC right. and all right. them. So for me to know that they knew who I was, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? The DOC and all them, like, they, yeah. they acknowledged who I was. That, that just blew me away. Like, yeah. wow, okay, it must really be out here. Because, like, if these cats know right. the name, then it must really be something. You know okay. What I'm so those two periods. You know, kind of solidified, and then you know, after that, me and Too Short kind of did some stuff. Right. You know, then I got a chance to get invited to his crib and all that. And, you know, I met facing them with the Ghetto Boys doing right. shows back then. So it's like I'm mingling with the, with, the, with all the people who I looked up to. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that, that, those were the moments you feel like, okay, I'm accepting, I'm in. All right, so we definitely got to transition into now times. We talking about 2019 slash 2020. It's so many new artists from Memphis, man. The sound, it changed, but it seemed like it's gravitated back to that old Memphis sound. You know what I'm saying? That riding, that trunk knocking sound. You know, you got artists like Duke Deuce. He's killing the scene right now, like truly killing the scene. Like, are there any artists out there that you're really rocking with right now that you know you might have in your headphones these days, or what? Man, I like um, I like NLE Chopper. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. I really do. I think that kid got a, uh, you know, he got a lot of talent. Yeah, you know, uh, of course, Money Bag Yo. Of course, you know, yeah. That's, yeah. To me, right now, that's like the Marvin Gaye <laughs> rap because it's like I he feel spits it. so real. You I know feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Man, I mean that's about it. Far as new, new, because yeah. it's a lot of stuff I hadn't heard. Yet. I got you. you know I got what I'm you. So I don't know. It, it could be somebody new. Right. As soon as I hear some of the new up to date stuff. I feel you. I feel you. Well, let me ask you about this. Like, have any artists have reached out to you, like on some, hey, big bro, I need some grooming, or just, you know what I mean, giving you your props, or anything like that, or what? Uh, yeah, a lot of artists reach out. Maybe not no known artists right now, I got but you. a lot I of got up you. and coming. I got you. They reach out. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, I don't know, man. In hip hop, it seemed like 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 I'm a musician first, yeah. Rapper second, yeah. The musician world, you don't have to be 
well known because right. musicians are always in right. contact, learning from each other. But yeah. it seems like when it comes to rappers, you have to be yeah. the hot cat for people to, you know, mingle and reach out. If you ain't hot and popping, it's like, I don't care what you've done or who you are, it's like, you ain't popping right now. Right. Yeah. You know, it ain't no really no. And it seems like that's the only genre that's like that. You know what I mean? Rock and roll ain't like that. You know, nah, 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 you know they roll, they man. they keep their people. And and one thing that I notice about like rock and roll and you know other genres of music, like people, let's say consumers, they instill that into their kids and their right, kids' right. kids. Like you can go to probably like a Rolling Stones concert or or you know maybe the the Beatles concert or whoever, and then they taking their kids with them. You know what right, I'm saying? And right, then the grandkids right. and everybody on it. But when right. it comes to rap, it's like, oh, okay, that's what's up. Matter of fact, I've had a legend here one time before. I did two interviews one time, right. and I had a new up and coming cat. And then I had a, a OG legend in the game, and I did my due diligence. Just, hey, let me introduce you to the. He was like, oh, okay, what's up? I'm like, really? <laughs> Little bro, you need to be soaking up some of this game. You know what Man. I'm saying? This this guy. And like I say, I ain't no name calling guy. Right, but right, you know right. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm I'm looking at it like, look, look, guy, you need to be soaking up this game because this OG right here, this right. this cat, you know what I'm saying, done did some major things and still getting publishing. Let's talk about publishing, man. So what, what's up, man? Paperwork uh, right or? Yeah, what's paperwork up? right now. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. well, in, them, in them early days, yeah. artists really didn't get no publishing, man. We only got like, some of us got less than five cents a record. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, they really ripped us off in those early years because for one, we didn't know no better. Yeah. For two, they really didn't see the real value in rap at right. that time, right. you know, in them early years. They knew it was making money, but they didn't think it was gonna touch the world, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. And, uh, you know, it's like, a lot of us just don't know how to read contracts. Yeah, you can't afford to go pay a lawyer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we. Hit, I mean, but I look at it as you got to pay to get in some kind of way. That was yep. that was my sacrifice yep. that I had to do to get in the game. Yep. But I will say this as well: like those evil forces that they claim that exist in the music industry are real. Yeah, you see what I'm saying, and that's one of the reasons why I'm glad I kind of got out that major label right. thing because it's right. some weird stuff was yeah, going yeah. on. You know, so <laughs> it's like when we got dropped, I didn't have a, really have a problem with it. Yeah. You know, because, hey, I had figured out the independent game around that time anyway. So right, right. I was cool with it, man. You know, but, I mean, yeah, publishing publishing paperwork right now. Okay, okay. You know? All right. One, one thing that stuck out to me earlier in this interview, how you mentioned how you had to get the investment money up. Right, you know, right. had to go to the street cats and whatnot. Right. Now, that's pretty much the lane right now for people to find investors. So, I mean, is it difficult to do that? I mean, because you got to sell yourself. You have right. to. You do. You, well, the thing about it, it always be easier to get street money invested because uh, most people don't know how to go about writing up a proposal. Right, you, you business pro proposal. Real yeah. investors, yeah. you know. And, yeah. And but the only thing about street investors is they level of knowledge that's yeah. real short, and they look at everything the same way they look at the game. Right. You know, if I right. front you this, I yeah. expect I expect this back. Yeah. And I, it's hard explaining them that real investments right. don't work like that. Nah, it's long but term. If they got the money and you ain't, right. it's what they think. They ain't trying to hit nothing you talking about. Right. Because at the end of the day, the money talk bulls and walk. You I know feel you, I feel you. So let me ask you this. Like, was there ever a time where an uh, investor wanted to kind of put their spin on your musical because i mean that's one thing that can happen and i've seen this happen you know and like i said i'm not naming no names there was an artist in memphis he was popping music was on the radio had a you know street pharmacist investing in him but he kind of was like now nah, i'm finna get you these beats with this known producer and you go do it like this and bro was like no nah, that ain't the lane i'm trying to go he's like well it's my money my way. So was it ever a time like that early on in your career? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My second album, which it, it's the record I hate, I put out mm. because it was totally influenced by money. Wow. And it was I was with this kind of like they kind of like a major but independent. They ain't gonna okay. say their name. It was nah. the second label that I released on too. Okay. But they had this thing going on where they were just putting out these imitations. Of what was hot at the right, time. Right, right. Yeah. At the time, Hammer was hot. <laughs> so they, I kind of see where this going. Yeah, they man. first artist <laughs> literally was Vanilla Ice. Wow, really? They had Vanilla Ice before he went and signed, I guess, whatever other company. Yeah, yeah. They had him first, and he was put out as kind of like to recoup some of them sales that right. Hammer was getting. Right. They had another group after that 
I ain't gonna say their name because I'm friends with them. Okay. There were some girls they kind of was supposed to be an imitation of Chris Cross. Okay, okay. So by the time I'm signing with them, Quick is blowing up. Okay. They got this, oh, you resemble Quick yeah. thing. So hey, they, they lay this money on the table. Yeah. Hey, we want you to do your album like this <laughs> so we can recoup. That's why I hate that record. And that's yeah. why you see the finger sign on the cover. I feel because you. I feel you. that whole project was based on imitating something yeah. that I wasn't cool with, but yeah. they cutting the check. Right. And this is what they want to do. Right. They got me under contract, yeah. you know, so it's, it kind of puts you in a situation where it's just, you know what I'm saying? It, if if I do it now, hopefully later on it'll go away and right. everybody remember. Right, but right. They shooting videos on this project. Yeah. They buying me these outfits. Yeah. You know, it was just yeah. the whole gimmick to sell right. records to put money in their pocket. But right. I'm left with the blame. It's yeah. like, because fans don't see all that going on. Of course. They, they just looking at you for the projects you put out. Right. They think this is your mind frame and your whole idea. Right. So I get at the end I get blamed for that. I was so young at the time I didn't realize yeah. that it was gonna be backlash from there. You know what I'm saying? So you get a whole charge with the oh man, you imitating this, you that was only for that one project. Right, though. right. I learned from that. After that it wasn't no more of that man. Yeah. So you know. Yeah, I, I, to answer your question, yeah, it, it has happened. It's it's happened before. Okay, yeah. okay. Now, like I said, man, Memphis is world renowned. I had, I believe that was Tom Ski Mask on the show a couple years back, maybe it was a year ago. And the statement he made was, if all us Memphis rap legends got together and did a world tour, everybody would eat. Do you agree with that statement? Yeah, I agree with it, but it's going to take the big dog. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Not just the middle man. Okay. It's gonna take okay. you got if you can't you can't do that if you don't include the big dog. Okay. And everybody know that and that's the only reason why it ain't happening. So that's everybody ain't gonna it's gonna be hard to get you know you know who I'm talking about. Well, I'll, I'll go bro. see if you say it. I'll go see if you go see it. I will say it. Yeah. Ain't, ain't no fear in the game. Yeah, it's gonna be yeah. hard to get Ball and Jay Z. Yeah. It's gonna be hard to get Paul and Juicy. Yeah. It's gonna be hard to get God. It's gonna be hard to get all those people yeah. in one. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's just too many different personalities, right. too many life different lifestyles. I, I, the only way I can see it happen, somebody gonna have to drop right. the money. To, right. Somebody really gonna have to want to see it happen. You know. Well, I mean, that would, like you say, they would want have to want to see it happen. Right, you know, right, it was. Right. I, I was actually at the uh, Three Six Mafia reunion tour where they had with uh, um, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Right, you know, right, a couple right. uh, last month, matter of fact, that was October, whenever that was. But anyway, it looked like they was pulling teeth just to get that done. You know, I was backstage and I'm seeing like it was it was weird because everybody had their own dressing room. And I'm like, wait a minute now. I'm knowing for a fact thirty years ago it was one room. Now everybody got their own room. So I could tell that, you know, you got egos and quite possibly things were done for money only, not right, just right, a all right, let's right. get the group back together now. Nah, but right. like you say, you know, it would take a lot, you know. So hey, Juicy J, go ahead, man. Lady, let's get it going. Let's get it going. I'm gonna put it out there just like that. You know, I feel like he's the you know, the biggest dog in the fight right now. You know, we can say that, you know, he's definitely chart topping, you know, he dropped that, uh he made the beef for what was it, Hot Girl Summer? That was Megan Thee Stallion and Nicki Minaj, yeah, like yeah, that yeah, was, you know what I'm saying, huge. So, what female artists you rocking with these days, man? Man, I can't see how anybody can't rock with making a style. My, my God, I, I, man, you know, I don't. I had to turn the TV off. Right? Oh, come on, man! Come on, man! Come on, man! <laughs> man, I mean, to have the look and the, the attitude, the delivery, and she can really rap. to have all that in one. That's that's a dangerous combination. And it's it's rare. I'm gonna be honest. It's rare. A lot of times, man, we will get. They they'll be a double threat, you know. They had a look right. and they they kind of kind of sound all right, but they right. the lyrics be trash. Right. But for her to actually be hard, look good, right. and she can rap, and it's, right. it seemed like she's writing her own shit. So well, I, I mean, so. I you know, so. seem I mean, like it. I wouldn't be mad at if she not because yeah. most female rappers, yeah. you know, have yeah. ghost writers. Yeah. Even if they write their own stuff, sometimes a ghost will come in and clean it up. Right. So I ain't mad at her. I think her delivery is good. I yeah. think she got good stage yeah. presence. She she has showmanship. So, yeah. you know, hey, man, much success to her, man. And the one thing that I like about her, man, like, 
when she be on there like twerking and busting it open, right, like right. that don't diminish her character at all. Like that don't right. take away from her stardom, her artistry oh, at all. It's like that it. shit make it grow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it, yeah, yeah, like she, it, yeah. yeah, she's definitely the top. And also, you know, people like Cardi B. You know, Cardi B is dope. You know, I like I like Cardi. You know what I'm saying? I like her personality more yeah. than I do. I like her as a person. Yeah. I don't know her personally, right, but right, I'm right, saying right. I like right. the personality she projects yeah. more so than I do. Her as an artist, yeah, you know I what feel I'm saying. You. I feel you. you know, I I think whether she was a rapper or not, she still was gonna be a star. Cause oh, look yeah. how big she blew up on Love and Hip Hop yeah. just from her character and personality. Yeah. So I don't. I think she could have did a talk show. Oh, yeah. and did just as, yeah. and been just as successful. So some people just have it. They just yeah. had a star card. And then if you look at where she started from, I I you know I used to DJ in the strip club. I used to see a lot of women in the strip club with star potential. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They just uh. If they don't see it for themselves, it's yeah. hard to convince them. Yeah. Know, I've tried to get a lot of females in the strip club to, you know, do music and right. do, do something else, but they yeah. just didn't see it. They, I mean, they, it's they it, it's it's hard. It. Like you say, quick money, man. It's hard for them girls to go legit. And you just open up a whole nother can of worms. Because like I say, I used to be into the, the nightlife, strip right. club, you know, right. all of that. You know, I was actually being groomed to... DJ in Platinum Road. Shout out to the big homie right. DJ Seven the Great. Well, retired DJ Seven the Great. He don't, he don't spend no more. But um, like just being in that atmosphere at a young age, brother. Like I saw so much stuff. The DJ is not just the DJ. The DJ is the pimp. The DJ is the is the dope pusher. The DJ is the bodyguard. I mean, hey, it's a safe haven for them hoes. I mean, for real. Talk to me. He can be all of the above. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah. I mean, I did it for years, man. Um, I did it in the Ebony Lakes. Man. Okay, it's one okay. of the most dangerous strip clubs yeah. I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, man. I've been to a lot of them all around the country, and that's one of the most dangerous because it was one way in, one way out. Right, right. Everybody in there got a pistol. You okay, know what I'm yeah. saying. Nah, nah, nah. I'm I'm a little youngin. I'm a little youngin. Where where exactly was Ebony Lakes at, man? That was right there off Democrat. Okay, okay. They, that's the one they turned it into the the jet strip, right, and then it was right. Kitten's Cabaret or something like that. Right, okay, okay. Right, right. Now, funny story about this spot. I was actually in there when it was the jet strip, and. Cr me and Crunchy Black was in there. Matter of fact, shout out to the homie Crunchy Black. Yeah, the spot Black? got raided. I mean, raided all the girls in there. So the police get on the mic. They say, hey, look, we finna check everybody. So if you got a warrant, you need to say something now. If you got dope on, you need to say something now. Crunchy over here with me. Man, I'm scared, Brick. I'm scared. Oh. You know Crunchy, he got that loud on him. You know he do, you know. But, I mean, the police, they didn't swell us. You know, I was like, hey, I'm just taking pictures. I'm this and on that. You know, and they, they let us party. I think it was like 31. 31 girls were soliciting, you know, right. to an undercover, you know. Right. But, I mean, that's just the game. Like, it's not just the, hey, I'm finna come in here and dance. You know, nah, it's the life. It's the life. So how, how many years you say you were a script up? Man, I worked picture? in there for years. Yeah. It's funny that you brought up the Crunchy Black story because I had an eight ball story. Oh, here we go. It uh, it been late one night. So is the statute of limitations up on it? We can talk about. Yeah, yeah. That okay, okay, crime, okay. Not, okay. A crime, <laughs> not a crime on his. Okay. Or my behalf. I was gonna say this is not yeah. Vlad TV. Right. We we are not incriminating nah, the night. No, <laughs> no sir. But it's just a funny story. Okay, okay. We was in there one night. Uh, I wasn't DJing that night, but I was just in there. I was DJing, but not that night. I got you. I was just in the club hanging out, you know, and uh, Ball come through there with the mound. They deep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They deep. So he's sitting at the bar. The mound kind of moved on toward the back of the club, you yeah. know. He's still at the bar, you know, absorbing all this, you know, his yeah. fame. You know, yeah. he's being Ball. You know, yeah. he's doing what he's supposed to do. Gold mouth yeah, Elvis. Right, right, right. <laughs> so some kind of confrontation jump out, man. And boom, the mound ended up getting a fight with this Eminem Lake security. Wow. Now, remind you, I'm an employee down there. Yeah. So, we had this thing called a wolf pack. Okay. Everybody ride to go. But at the same time, I know most of these cats yeah. that's from the mound because I went to Mount Road. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I frequent the mound a lot. Got family all through the mound. Yeah. So, boom, they fight break out. They yeah. right in the middle of it. So, I'm standing there next to the manager of the club. He tell me, man, go back there and get the, you know, the young, yeah, young, yeah, young. yeah, yeah. Ooh, I run back there, get the yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it had got so bad in there, man, to where he had to shoot it in the club. Wow. Boom, man, you imagine a 357 going off in the club. Yeah. Man, to my ear ring. I'm yeah. standing right behind him. <laughs> you know, everybody around me throwing. 
So I'm thinking, man, hold up, bottle up there. Let me go check on right. it. That's just how my mind right. works. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. This, this my we, you know, we in here deep. Let me yeah. go check on the home. I look over there, the home gone. I ain't yeah. see him no more. Yeah. So all of a sudden, I see this head peeping over the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder who that could be. Man, this ball, he's a guy behind the bar. Man, what was cold at? What was yeah. cold at? Let me go get the home with cold, man. Get him all up out of here, but... You know, we ain't let them go out the front. Man. Right, we right. We escort them out the back yeah. safely. You yeah, know what yeah, yeah, of course. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't let nothing happen to Bob, yeah. man. You know, him and JG, man, I, I always have a special spot in my heart for them cats because, I, you know, I pulled them in the game. Right. Seeing they grow, right. you know, help give them develop and all that. So, right. you know, it's a, it's a special kind of love you have for certain cats, man. You know, it's deep with them. So I'm, I'm always thinking like that. Yeah. Anyway, I see them anywhere. Right. And I know I'm straight. It's, right. it's, it's, you know, them the homies. Yeah. You know, they straight. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, but I thought it was funny though. I ain't know he could move that quick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Cause Bow used to be real big. Like <laughs> Bow was big as fuck. Well. He done lost a lot of weight. Shout out to the big homie, hey Bow. Yeah, I think out. he called himself Pimp Casso. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pimp Casso. Shout out to the guy, man. But uh, right, right. hey. One thing we gotta talk about, are you making any music these days? Are you done or what you doing? No, 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 I'm st they won't let me stop, man. What? I still get emails. And, they beating and, on the door like man, that, man. It's like, come on, man, just, you know, so I'm appreciative of that. Hey. Cause they could have been like, oh, yeah. man, you done. You, psh, come on, man. You gotta serve them so things, for somebody man. to still wanna hear something yeah. in 2019 going on 2020 for yeah. me, I, how could I not give it to them? You know, yeah. I'm working on something. I got this album called Cannabis and Conversation. Okay. I've been working on it for a minute. I already got enough songs to put it out, but sometimes I make stuff and I don't feel right, right about it. And I, you know, I got to stop doing that because I end up letting a lot of songs build up and I never use them. So yeah. I'm eventually release that catalog too. Okay. But I'm putting together these uh, these last final tracks for that album. I'm going to go ahead and drop it. Hopefully we get another year around February March, okay. or something like that. Okay, so maybe around the springtime we can yeah, 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 expect yeah. some new heat. Right, I like right. that, I like that. Now, right. of course, we got to talk about, man, the state of Memphis hip-hop right now. Right. Where we at? Oh, man, that's a good question. Uh, I've been out the loop so long. Like I said, man, I listen to my little few favorites. Yeah. I don't really know. Where we at as far as, what do you mean, like, as far as the artists, the, the new artists? Yeah, themselves? I mean, like, it, it, it's Memphis, you know, would you consider it hot right now? Because, I mean, okay, you really remember the Atlanta run, right? Right, right, you right. You know, right, Atlanta right. had Snap Music, of course, they got Crump from us, right, but right, I'm right, saying, right. like, they had a mean run. Memphis, has Memphis had that run? Or is Memphis close, or are we gaining on that run? Or, I mean, what? I think we've had that, those run in little bitty spurts. Spurts, okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like you had the Gotti run, you had the three six run. Yeah. Never as a whole like Atlanta. D. Never as many right. artists like they. Right. Like they hitting them from all right. angles. You know, we always had that one out there, yeah. that one group, that one solo artist. And because when those people get on, a lot of times they don't have them inside to reach back and. Right. Oh, I gotta pull my brothers up. It's just right. man, I'm on. Screw everybody else. Get it on your own. Yeah. And it's just how the mentality is a lot. Of, you know what I'm saying? If I would have had that mentality yeah. coming out, you probably wouldn't have heard about them when you heard them. When you heard them. Man, I'd have heard fast. Paul them because a lot of people right. don't know. I gave Paul the game. Wow. I told him how to go get that deal. And yeah. You know what I'm saying? And all. If he was trying to sign yeah. with somebody, he wouldn't have probably been independent if I wouldn't have had that talk with him because they didn't really know. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So a lot of moves he made, I was, I was kind of coaching him through it. So... If I had had the mentality where I ain't, I ain't stuck nobody else, it's all about me, boom. Yeah. They may have not hit when they hit. I ain't yeah. saying they would have never hit because you, you don't know what destiny got for somebody, but right. they wouldn't have hit at that time. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. It would have took them a lot. Might, might have been a long way. Might right. have been a long way. Now, we've seen movies like, you know, of course, Straight out of Compton, right, you know. Right. Of course, recently we've seen shows like the the Wu Tang series, you right, know, the American right, right. Saga. Right. Now, my question is, man, could we see at some point a Memphis rap series or movie? I mean, just chronicling chron chronicling the careers of all you guys, or as many of you guys as possible. I, I think I think what'll happen is. They probably ain't gonna start back from our days. They gonna probably start right at tell the club up and all three, that. Three six yeah. and do on yeah. up. They ain't gonna go back as far as us because if they do that, then they gonna have to really show right who did what. Right, right. And a lot of cats don't want that to get out because right. 
it's going to go against everything they've been talking right. and ranting about right. most of their whole career. So, yeah, I'm sure you'll probably see it, but I'm yeah. probably won't go back as far as I think. It'll probably start right when 360 hits. Or maybe even right when Ball hit. You know I mean, I think it'll be dope if it starts, like I say, with your record deal. Right. And then we see, like, Pretty Tony get booked. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Right. And then we get to seeing, like, Triple Six Mafia and then even go to Fly. And then, right, you know, right. even get our way up to Gotti and then stop right there. Right. And then let them wait exactly. Them. exactly. It, it should go like that, but you'd be surprised how much stuff me and Pretty Tony get cut out of. Yeah. yeah. I mean, on every level, it's like they don't want our history to get out. Now, the fans don't have no problem. I'm talking about these right. be people in the industry right. Right. that be trying to block these airways because it's like, I don't know, they just don't want the originators to get their credit. It's like people want to take the credit for themselves and run with it. Just like, just like, it's like the beat. That Drake and everybody use that looking for the chewing yeah. You know, yeah. people yeah. think it come from slob on my knob, right. but it's not. It's looking for the chewing. That was the first time that beat was made. So that squeaky, right? That squeaky right. zerk. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They should be getting the credit for that, yeah. but people don't get them the credit. They get Juicy J the credit. Right. They think it started with slob on my knob, but even slob on my knob was spin. I was a spin off from looking for the chewing. Right. But if if Juicy them don't say that, yeah. People are going to research that. They don't care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but they just keep running If he don't speak on it, then the proper people don't get the credit. Just like people, we don't get the credit for Crump. Yeah, nah. Because don't nobody say nothing. Nah. People stand right there next to Lil John yeah. and don't say nothing. Yeah. Don't say a word. Yeah. And he claimed to be the king of Crump. Yeah. How? When we had Crump before Atlanta did. Now, a lot of people don't know this. I used to go to these. I went to a meeting. It, it, I, went, I used to go to a lot of meetings in Atlanta back in the day, but I went to this meeting at So So Dell. Okay. When they had the office around the street, around the corner from Magic City. Okay. You know, they first the office. Club. Right. Right. So, you know, I'm in there. They had this artist named Black. Okay. They wanted me to rifle. They wanted me to get him to. No. If I give it to Black, he hit with it. It's going to make it look like we perpetrate. Yeah. So, yeah. at some point, you have to preserve the sound, but a lot of people didn't do that. Yeah. As soon as they get offered some money, any kind of opportunity, they give it away. Yeah. Like you have Atlanta artists with a song called Get Buck. Yeah. The Gangsta yeah. Walk. That's I somebody mean, from Memphis that sold them that. Well, one thing I got to say, man, since we mentioned Get Buck, come on, man. MC Hammer. He knew what was popping. And, 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 and this ain't no shade. Hammer used to be down here. Hammer knew what was popping. It's Bro. just, I ain't never heard Hammer say, oh, yeah, I got different from Memphis. He said it. He said, he said it on he did say it. Oh, okay. So okay. Get Dan from okay. Memphis. But Hammer okay. didn't okay. steal it. You know how he got it? How he get it? Through a dancer named Act the Fool. Golly. Who was best friends with Jazz and Faye. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's the truth. They, they was real close. Okay. Okay. Act the Fool was also an artist on Hammer's label. Okay. He started out as a dancer. And okay. He was a great dancer. Yeah, yeah. Very talented brother. Yeah. Hammer seen him and yeah. flipped out over yeah. him and took him on the road. He gave them that Get Buck dance. Yeah. So, that was given to him, and I guess it impressed him so much yeah. that he wanted to make it a part of his own. Because so. I heard it, but get but get but, and right, everybody right. was saying it. And then, like I say, we, we talk about looking for the chewing, like, I, but see, that's the thing. I'm going to say this. Pimp C did acknowledge Memphis. So, Pimp C had looking for the, you know, he would run with that, but he acknowledged Memphis. So, that ain't, like I said, there ain't no shade on, you know, the OGs is just... I just want to show y'all that the nucleus, the genesis, is Memphis. You feel me? You know, this is where it come from. I know a lot of people talk about New York, you know, it's the mecca for hip-hop. Yeah, I feel you. But see, New York, that was hip-hop. Memphis right. is rap. It's a right. difference. You know, right. Cali, that's rap. You know what I'm saying? It's a difference right. between hip-hop and rap. You know, right, right, to me, hip, and this is my opinion, but I always felt like hip hop was the shit they be dancing to. You know what I mean? Like at parties, you know that well, that, that kid and play shit. You well, know what I'm saying? It's, Not, it's like, no shade. Well, you know? to me, from my vision, is is to me like okay, like I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take it all the way back to rap music. Okay, where okay. the rappers actually rapped over real music. Yeah, like Curtis Blow yeah. and all them. They first yeah. records. Yeah, the they breaks. were rapping. Yeah, they was rapping yeah. over a band. Right, that was, you know. Right. So that's rap music. Hip hop was when you took samples and bits and pieces, ah, and you know what I'm yeah, saying. And you yeah. sequenced it, like okay, you took the James okay, Brown samples okay, and yeah, all the jazz yeah, samples, yeah. and boom, boom, boom. So that's hip hop. Gotcha. So now gotcha. you got gangster rap. Yeah. When that when NWA hit, you got to realize they were using live instruments. Well, Ice T back to the music. Well, Ice T was really, Ice okay. T. My bad. Yeah, right. I stand yeah, correct. Yeah. Ice T. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was kind of. It was kind of a he mix. He was kind of rock influence. Yeah, he kind of. But he rock, was gangster though. Yeah, you he know was what I'm gang, like six in the morning yeah. drum machine. Yeah, hood, yeah. You know, so it's kind of. 
He was kind of a little bit of both, yeah. hip hop and gangster yeah. rap music. Right, right. But like NWA was all oh, yeah. gangster rap yeah. music because they yeah. had live guitar, mm -hmm. live bass. So it's the elements of what creates the sound I got as you. well. I you got know what I'm saying? Because like I tell people, live instrumentation is real music. Yeah. All this digital stuff, that's really like organized noise. Right. It's like ones right. and zeros. Right. There's no real vibration. Yeah, like digital. if I hit a drum machine, you're going to feel it. But if I hit this snare drum, it's gonna be a, it's gonna yeah, affect you different. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Right. You're right. And then I love the way live music breathes. Right. You know what I'm saying? That right. stuff breathes. You know, like you say, it's just a bunch of dots. Right. That digital right. stuff is a yeah, bunch yeah, of dots. I can I would listen so much of that. Yeah. I have to hear some real instrumentation because music soothes the savage beast. Not not hip hop. Not yeah. program. Right. Digital sound, yeah, yeah. real music, real strings being yeah. strung, real skin being pounded yeah. on. You know what I'm saying? Real keys being being hit. So. People need to know that they, when they say they know music, no, you have to really know music. You have to know your frequencies right. and all that, your note right. scale. You have to know what's music and what's not music because it's a misconception. Same way right. with mixtape. Yeah. Our days of growing up with mixtape was when the DJ took all the hottest stuff, there you mixed go. it together there so you, you wouldn't have to have but one CD. You right. can hear all the songs on that one CD. Right, right. Now a mixtape is somebody just taking people beat, rapping yep. over it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, I don't know. I guess if that's what they want to claim it is today, and then you know, and then it's even evolved to they just put original music on it and just right. call it a mixtape, right? You right, know, just right, like right. an EP. You know, right. it, it's just it's they they take stuff and they 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 make it their own, and right. you know, and Cause, it because the word mixtape excludes you having to have marketing and promotion, right? They know mixtape is something you would just put Street, out in the right. streets, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So. That term alone can, I guess, it can help with promotion. Or whatever. was my mixtape? Now, man? now let me ask you about this. We were talking about samples and all that. Like back then, was samples getting cleared or just mine? Hey, they were supposed to get supposed clear. to be. A lot of people put stuff out without the proper clearance, and they really didn't bother you unless yeah. it blew up. Right, when it blew up, if they bothered you, they would spend more money than they would make going after you if right. you ain't got no proof of sales. You know, so yeah, I think certain records got attacked. Like with Hammer, you can't touch this. Right. Look how Rick James came back yeah. and sued them. Evidently, yeah. they must have had no clearance. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. So, I guess... It, it was the same with uh, Ice Ice Baby. Now that right, I think about right, it. Yep. right, right, yep. right, 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 yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but one thing I noticed, like, now, artists, they just hop on some. You know, right, right. hey, worry about it when we get there. Right, like, they just right. jumping on it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's... I don't think labels are worried as much because it's digital platforms. It's easy to track that stuff. And then, and then the second thing, like a lot of these labels, most of them they own the master certain you know artists, and that's kind of right. sad. I hate that they the people family or their estate don't have it, you know. But these labels, hey man, it's monopoly. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely monopoly. You know. Yeah, it's it's the way it was set up, man. Artists never really were set up to win when it right. came to dealing with record labels. Artists was supposed to really focus on their show right, performances right. like as far as the recording industry part that was supposed to be totally for the company yeah and, you know companies don't lose they don't even spend their own money yeah when they put your record out the money that's recouped they let it sit in the account and draw interest and they yeah. pay you off the interest they don't even pay you off your real money right. you know what i'm saying so yeah. they they never lose man they yeah. always in the winning and they'll take if one artist is doing great, they'll take some of their artist money and promote it, you know what I'm saying, right. to the artist that they really want yeah, yeah, yeah. to blow up. Like they took UGK money probably and yeah. promoted Justin Timberlake yeah, and Britney, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like probably took some R. Kelly money. So you money mean to tell me that Justin Timberlake popped because of Pocket Full of Stones? I ain't gonna say that. But I'm pretty sure some of their money went to a promotion. I feel you. I feel you. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, and probably it's funny. So. And it's yeah. funny. He from Memphis, so he probably used to listen. Well, I don't know. He. But probably. you know what though? I got a question for Memphis, man. What's that, man? Why do y'all hold rappers responsible for helping out new talent? And you got a big star like Justin Timberlake right here in Memphis, and nobody ever says. Oh, why Justin don't help nobody? Why? Why he don't come around and put why? nobody on? Why he don't throw nothing to him? Why don't y'all ever hold him accountable? One artist that I saw him work with was a cat by the name of Free Soul, and that was it. I ain't seen nobody else. I mean, nobody else. Nobody else. I don't even know if he's still with him or not. I don't know. Free Soul holla at me, you know. But I've never, I've never seen it. Yeah. I've never. You, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I've never seen. You hear him say, "Man, God don't help. God don't do this." Or yeah. Paul don't do that. Juicy don't do. That. What yeah. about Justin Timberlake? You he got right. more money than him. He got more. Money. I promise. What about him? Why y'all ask him? I promise. He got in sync money. He probably ain't spent it yet. I mean, <laughs> right. for real. Right. He, he probably still got some in sync checks in the I ain't cash him yet. Yeah. 
that's that's a that's a hell of a question. Hey, right, Memphis, I hope y'all really you know consider that. But you know how we are. You know our mentality, man. You know that. Oh man, God should have been for me, oh. Dog ain't messing with me. <laughs> Man, so hey, what? Let me let me ask you this, man. So you got a lot of artists out here, you know, new cats out here. Like, are you familiar with like like Big Motor? I've heard of the name. Okay, you got people like Big Motor. You got people like um um, let's say um B O Lil Kenny. You know, just naming a couple of them. Like, those are the guys that are really scratching and clawing at that door, but they haven't quite broken through that door. What could artists do from the city to break through that door and bust it open and be like, hey, I'm here too? You know what I'm saying? Because they definitely talented. But what can Memphis artists do to, you know, get more mainstream or get more, you know, more eyes on them? They have to learn about marketing and promotion. Yeah. That's that's that be the missing link. Gotcha. You can have all the talent in the world. You can have the hottest record. But if it's not placed where people know it's available and it's in their face. Yeah. Then it's just gonna be the hottest record that was never heard. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. And that's been one of my issues. Okay. I never really been able to get the market and promotion that other groups like Eight Ball and mm. Three Six Number. I never had that promotional budget. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even when I was on a major, I wasn't priority. Right. You right. Know, I was right. just one of those. Let's throw them up against the wall. Right. It see stick if cool. it stick. Yeah. If yeah. it don't. Yeah. But that ain't why they kicked me off the label. They kicked me off the label because. At the time we was doing shows, it's like the gang culture was really, right. really at an all time high. You know what I'm saying? So it was the name. The gangster yeah. in front of the name yeah. caused us a lot of trouble and a lot of issues when we went certain places. So honestly, we used to tote guns, bro. We, yeah. we had to be our own security. So of course. A lot of time, a lot of shows in and shootouts and, yeah. and fights and stuff like that, and the label would call. You know what I'm saying? Us what? and be like, what happened? What's going on? And, yeah. You know, and they just had these complaints, and I guess they had had it, they had, had it up the hill. With us. But I, okay, so you say that, but. You say gang culture in the name gangster, but I mean I remember artists by the name of Tone Loke. Now Loke, I'm not crazy or nothing, but I mean, hey, ain't that cuz now? You see what I'm saying? Cousin. You know, we Tone can fast Loke, forward yeah. just a little bit more. Killer right. Mike. Right. I mean, I'm right. saying right. so. I mean, is is it? Are they being selective? Cause you from Memphis? I, so think, I mean, what? Yeah, I think I think that you know when they hear gangster, they automatically assume gangster cycle. Okay. Top, you okay. Know, and, yeah. and you know, it's it's ironic because most of the people I grew up with, you know what I'm saying? That mm. that's what they were. You know, like you. like G D and Vice Lord kind of it didn't really hit Memphis strong until like the late eighties. Yeah. Like Memphis had their own game. Okay. So when they hit strong, you know, it's like they just befriended me. I befriended them. Right. Like a lot of guys I grew up with, they they just Morphed into G. Right. That's what they. That's the route they went. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you kind of just go along with what you grow up. Right. Like some people don't intend to be Crips, but if everybody grew yeah. up with a Crip, yeah, they gonna be friend them anyway. Yeah. You, yeah. You hanging with them? You in? You might as well plug in. Yeah. You, you in the same situation they in? Yeah. So that's kind of how they went. So in a lot of areas it was helpful, in a lot of areas it was dangerous. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So. That's 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 one of the reasons, and then, you know, when people get to testing you and all, yeah, and, yeah. you know, all that break out. Yeah. Cause we was little dude, we we wasn't no big fella, we were little skinny <laughs> cats. So I feel you. I feel we you. had to keep them guns. Yeah. You know, some big cats out there trying to test you, man. And once they realize that we will use them, yeah. You know, hey, it's a different story then. So especially back in the day, man, right. big cat coming at you, he got a jerry curl right, and a rope right, chain. Right. Yeah, hey, you gotta bust that yapa out. I you promise. You don't know if he gonna stick you. Or you don't know. Ten more people behind him. Yeah. You, know, you in them club settings, you don't yeah. know what's coming and going, man. You yeah. have to, you have to go ahead and throw the knockout blow sometimes. Cause at the end of the day, you got to make it home safe. Yeah, you have to. You that's know what I'm hey, so that's the nobody want. Nobody want to buy it in the dime, no club, right? You wanna make it home, man. Now I want to go ahead and transition. I, I wore this shirt for a reason, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Hey, <laughs> plenty of suckers out there. But I ain't going to talk about the suckers. I want right. to talk about the group is on the road, sir. Right, right, Man, right. what was that like? I mean, because we talking about the 90s. You know, you say you was hitting Atlanta, so that sound like Freaknik country. I mean, yeah, what's popping? Yeah, I hit, I, hit, I hit a few Freakniks, man. You know what I'm saying? But I wasn't real big into group. Okay. Because, I mean, you got to realize, man. The way my career happened is like, you know what I'm saying? I, I used to roll with the hoop. Okay. We didn't have much back then. Got gotcha. you. know what I'm saying? Gotcha. We didn't have the fancy clothes like the prep guys yeah, and all the yeah. athletes and stuff like that. So I went from just a dusty little rogue cat to gangster pet overnight. Right. Like, so 
I'm used to people laughing at my clothes. Now I go to the mall, I can buy anything I want, yeah. and I put them on, but physically you change, but mentally you still, yeah. what the hell are you looking at? Right, you know what right. I'm saying? I, <laughs> it took me a long time to get there. Even if yeah. somebody give you a compliment, yeah. you know, it's to me it's damn near right. offensive because right. of my mentality. Yeah, so yeah. when groupers would come up, it all looked fake to me. Like, I got you. I got it's you. the only reason y'all coming over because, it's, you know right. what I'm saying? So. Right. My whole mentality was different. Now, people around me, yeah. man, you crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, me, I'm yeah. like, yeah. Know, so I didn't really get into the, every, maybe every blue moon, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. But one thing I did do, and there ain't, ain't no name going to be in call, I but I, I was involved with the Two Live Crew dance. Oh, like, my goodness. That's something a lot of people couldn't accomplish back wow. then. They may have wanted to. Yeah. But see, Brother Marquis, that's a homie, man, yeah. you know. So yeah. he kind of hooked me up, man. So now I, I can say, you know. I had a chance to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Be intimate with a two live group dance. Wow. I never revealed a name or like that. Oh, no. Nah, nah. Yeah, you know, that was that was a highlight to me, yeah. you know, because I grew up watching two live groups. Right, right. With them girls shaking yeah. over you. Never thought yeah. I'd be able to, yeah. you know, kick it with one of them. But, you know, other than that, man, that was the highlight of my life for being a rapper. Yeah. You know, dealing with a two live group dance. Other than that, I can't think of no other than that. I All feel, the rest of that shit look fake. You I know feel, what I'm saying? I feel. All right, go ahead, drop this social media, man, that people can keep up with you and all the updates and all that. Right. Well, I'm on uh, I'm on Instagram, Gangster Pat 1991. You know, I'm on the uh, Facebook under my real name, Patrick Hall. You can catch me at Gangster Pat, spelling gangster with an X in the middle. That's Facebook. Uh, pretty much it, man. That's, those are the two areas I hang out in social media wise. You know, and uh, I try to answer every inbox. Every 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 uh, comment I try to respond, you know, because I I think connection with the people is right. is healthy. But you know, right. you then you have to deal with those opportunities right. as well. So yeah. you know, it's sometimes most of the time it's fun. Sometimes yeah. it can get offensive, but yeah. other than that, I try to deal with everybody. But that's that's me on social media, man. You get me on Facebook, on Instagram. I definitely be saying the big homie Tommy right the third. He still be swinging all his old vinyl man. tapes, all that. You still be swinging your old stuff or what? Man? Not like I should. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? But I'm proud of Tommy right, man. Oh, it's man. inspirational yeah. to see Tommy just come back at it like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we used to bump into each other. Right. You know, we right. both was going through it, man. Yeah. We don't know if this, I don't know how long I'm gonna keep yeah. going. Yeah. You know? yeah. And to see him just pick it back up and just roll with it, man. And he still it. got the perm. Still got the perm. Still got the perm. Why would he not have it? 2019, 2020 right. with the perm. Why would he? He better not cut it. Nah, he can't he cut it. Keep it. He like James Brown. He better ride <laughs> on to the ground. I promise. <laughs> you know I I promise. Any shout out to the thing before we go, man? Yeah, man. Shout out to Memphis, period, man. All the real OGs, man. The DJ Zerg, the Squeakers, the Al Capone, the Spanish Flies. Uh, the SMKs, man. Everybody. Pretty Tony, man. Uh, Slice Rod. Reggie B, man, uh, R.I.P. Fat Tony, you know that's that's all the OG set right there, man. And to anybody I forgot, man, and all the new all the new generations, man. Hey, salute y'all, man. Keep doing your thing, man. You know, keep it Memphis, man. Keep representing. And uh, ain't number love coming on my end, bro. Most definitely. Last question I got for you, man. If it can be any artist that you want to collab with that you never work with, let's say an indie artist, you know, from Memphis, right. and then let's say a big major artist. Who would those artists be? I don't know. I like to collab with NLE Chopper, you know. Yeah. I like I like it the way he flow, man. Yeah. The way cuz shit, man, I listen to some of my old stuff. We damn they're talking yeah. about the same thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. That would be a dope collab, you know. That'd be dope. Um man. as far as independent rapper, I don't know, man. It's hard to say, bro. There's so many, man, yeah. that yeah. I would love to rap with, man. I'd yeah. like to get some of money back too, man. Oh, yeah. I like his flow definitely, man. Hey, I definitely got to say thanks for coming on the show, man. Kicking it with you, chopping it up. It's been a blast, man. Like I say, we've been working on trying to get this, you know, and I definitely got to say rest in peace to my brother, Jeremy Wilson. But one of the things he told me a couple years back, he was like, man, you got to have Gangsta Pat on your show. Remember, he was the first artist that right. ever got, well, first rapper to have a major deal in Memphis. He right, told man. me that a couple years ago, and I right. hey, I just been trying to make it happen there since. So, hey, it's a, it, it's a blessing to make it happen. Like I say, long live Jeremy Wilson, my brother. I love you, man. But with that being said, man, thanks again for coming on the show. Hey, now back to Bring TV Extendo.